here we have today uh, Professor Pierre Saint-Amand from New Haven, Connecticut, from Yale University, who has agreed to kindly speak with us about his uh, memories of Professor René Girard and how he met him and how he began working with him. So let me start off by asking you, how did you hear about Professor René Girard and what, did, what drew you to uh, Professor René Girard? Well, um, you know, I was an undergraduate uh, at uh, the University of Montreal, and I decided to pursue graduate studies. And um, I uh, applied to um, two schools in the United States, one of them uh, being uh, the Johns Hopkins University, the way it was, it was called then. So I uh, um, discovered um, uh, Girard, uh, René Girard, by uh, and, and, and entering, entering uh, Johns Hopkins and joining the French, the, it was the Romance Languages department at that time. Um, the only thing that I remember, um, one of the things that I remember doing preceding my arrival at uh, uh, Johns uh, Hopkins was to purchase uh, Violence and the Sacred at a Montreal bookstore. Uh, 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 before leaving. So uh, it was one of the books that I had. And I, um, you know, I uh, took a class with him. I took several seminars with him while at uh, Johns Hopkins. Although um, uh, one of the professors in the uh, department that I had encountered in Montreal previously, uh, from, of, uh, before going uh, there, was Michel Serre, oh, yeah. who was uh, also, um, you know, um, had a um, visiting professorship at, uh, at uh, Johns Hopkins. So I took classes with um, a number of professors there. Um, René was one of them. And um, my initial interests actually were more, uh, compatible to the teaching and the work of Michel Serre. Uh, and I wrote a dissertation on uh, Denis Diderot um, that um, sort of followed, if I can say, that uh, the teachings of, uh, of Michel Serre. My interest in uh, Girard, uh, really started and, and grew um, when I became a, a professor at, um, at Stanford, an assistant professor at Stanford. I see. So you didn't really work with uh, René uh, that much at Johns Hopkins? No, no. no. I, took, I took his classes and sort of I wrote, as it can happen in a class, uh, uh, papers that were Girardian for Sure. Him in particular, and um, but my real um, um, sort of dealing what was your dissertation with, on with his work. My dissertation was on on Diderot, Diderot. and it was on um, the notion of um, uh, complexity, which was a notion that was in vogue, um, uh, you know, in the um, in the 80s, uh, coming from um, two um, historians of science, right. uh, um, Ilya Prigogine and Isabel Stengers, develop, developed this. And, um, but they worked on Prigogine and Stengers on the notion of disorder which was also a notion that one, one found in uh, Michel Serre's uh, writings. And there was a symposium at Stanford that they started on order and disorder. Exactly, exactly. So it was a, a combination of, uh, of those notions that I used uh, in my dissertation. Uh, studying um, Diderot, as a, the, the writings of Diderot, especially the scientific writings of Diderot, as a, as a, a, a precursor 
I of um, what so became developed uh, let me ask later. You, uh, when you were taking René Girard's classes, what kind of a professor was he? Was he serious? Was he relaxed? Was he joyful? Was he what, what, what kind of a what kind of a person? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, interesting. It was uh, Girard was uh, very different than Serre in that comparison. Michel Serre is a is a, a, a sort of a, a giant, a sort of pedagogue, um, um, extraordinarily charismatic, um, you know, with his seminars were always, although he never he read them, but you could see that he had prepared um, uh, everything from, um, from the beginning to the, to the end of the seminar. And, you know, he would occasionally have recourse to the piece of paper, but not, not really. Girard was very different in that regard. A very um, relaxed, uh, sort of affable, um, um, professor, um, uh, ad-libbed um, uh, a lot. Um, there, it was, it was, it was, they were very different in that way. Right. So his courses were very, um, very open pedagogically. Um, uh, and uh, he was humorous, uh, indeed. Um, did not take himself uh, seriously, and his um, teaching was very, um, very accessible in that uh, in that regard. Um, uh, although um, always uh, really focused on his. Um, on his on his on his theory mimetic theory okay on mimetic theory yes and were you at johns hopkins when they had the big symposium on structuralism or did you come no back? no no that was uh, before me before we could, okay it was before so, i i arrived there yes I see. so uh, then uh, when you went to stanford what year did you go to stanford uh, 1982 um, i believe 1982. And I arrived there in 1982. Uh, I arrived there as an assi as an assistant professor, and uh, of course, Girard had been my professor at uh, Hopkins. So I was basically uh, returning uh, almost to school <laughs> when I was at Hopkins. Uh, when I when I was uh, when I went to to Stanford, of course, he was my colleague. Uh, very. Uh, a wonderful colleague, uh, um, and uh, and this is when I started um, really working uh, more closely with him. And I um, read very seriously uh, "Des Choses Cachées Depuis la Fondation du Monde," uh, which um, transformed my um, my 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 reading uh, and my understanding of, uh, of Girard. And um, I'll say that um, it, it, not just my relationship to Girard, but also my um, relationship to religion, frankly, uh, and, and to, um, uh, to uh, my uh, my Catholicism, uh, because um, I had never seen in the demonstrations, especially in his reading of the of the of the biblical of some of the biblical episodes, I had never seen su such convincing clarity, and. Um, in that, in that way, um, it was very uh, transformative reading. He actually offered me that book. Oh. He offered me the, the, the you know, a, a, the volume. It came out in, in a, a pocket edition. Okay. And, um, and I read it from beginning to end with a, yeah, with, with a sense of, um, extraordinary um, clarity, frankly, yeah. Was it difficult for you though, 
given the fact that it had anthropology and it had psychology and it had Bible, it, it, it didn't have anything to do with what you were studying before. That's true. But I was already used to uh, having read uh, Violence and the Sacred. Okay. I was, I was used to his forays into uh, anthropology, uh, and psychology, and it was also the time, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a child, so to speak, of the um, uh, post-structuralism uh, 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 time and, and period. Therefore, I, I delved into, you know, I had read uh, Lévi-Strauss, I had read Freud, I took classes on, on Freud and Lévi-Strauss. So it wasn't very um, uh, complicated for me to, to be uh, reading uh, in those... Um, in those um, Mode. theories, yeah. Right, so things hidden in century. That was the book that also transformed me. That I, oh, I, really? Yes, absolutely. I, Interesting. I, I, it seems like Things Hidden has been the key book that has transformed a lot of people. When I do these interviews, a lot of people talk about Things Hidden uh, since the foundation of the world being the, the key book that has transformed people. Yes, um, yes. The The... The um, the reading of the, the story of Solomon and the and the two child the two the 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 the, the, the kids that are being um, fought over by the two mothers, yes. uh, I, I think was uh, illuminating for me, uh, uh, um, and also uh, the way you know the arc of the of of the book from the the scapegoat to the um, Agneau de Dieu, to the, to the Lamb of God. Yes. Uh, was uh, the, the sort of the story of sacrifice uh, uh, to its, um, to its uh, um, sort of um, uh, the, 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 the ultimate sort of refusal um, um, or uh, uh, éloignement um, was for me, uh, convincing in it in its sort of arc, right? It just made sense, right? To me, and, and 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 sort of appeared as as a a kind of uh, indelible truth. Th that's the way I perceived it, and that's why I was, uh, I think, transformed by it. Fantastic. It, it sort of imposed itself, right, as a kind of. Uh, irrefutable, uh, uh, not indelible, uh, I, I meant to say irrefutable truth. When you were a colleague with him, did you, did you ever discuss it with him? Did you have conversations with him about it? I, I don't know if I exactly did, but there's something more interesting that, that I wanted to tell you, the, the way that uh, I became, without knowing, uh, you know, um, sans le savoir, we would say in French, uh, a, a kind of Girardian. Because um, when I was at, at Stanford, uh, we had sort of very hot summers o o often. And René very kindly would in let me come to his um, swimming pool. <laughs> and, uh, and that was, you know, uh, uh, we were always, you know, very friendly and we had uh, conversations. He, he loved to talk about about um, actuality and, and news, and uh, so we always delved into many conversations. And um, so, and and that would continue, of course, uh, next to uh, close next to his pool. Um, we discussed books, um, and I, I I did not realize that all that time that I spent uh, uh, going to his pool was kind of, um, how, to, how to say it exactly? There was a, a, there was a, a secret pedagogy that was put in place that left me, in the end, a learned uh, uh, Girardian. Um, of course, that was, uh, you know, um, as a result of my own uh, sort of uh, approfondissement, a uh, deepening of his 
of his theory, as I told you, I, I, I took, he gave me that, that this was cachet. I took him home, read the whole thing. And, um, but, but um, over um, this uh, preparation came this friendly pedagogy. Right. <laughs> you were friends, essentially. It was kind of you were friends, yes. And I am a friend who became a, a student uh, without knowing. <laughs> Sans le savoir. Yeah. It was very generous. And very, yes. And I have, I have been a, a Girardian ever, ever since. Um, and I reread him very often. And um, he is also someone that I would call when I'm dealing with a text that I wanted, when I'm teaching it, when I'm teaching the text, to give a Girardian interpretation, you know, I would I would call him and we would we would we would discuss my ideas, and you know I continued um, those conversations until until when he became ill and he could not speak anymore. But right. that's not so so far away. Right. That was in 2013, 14, uh, around then. Yes, yes. So you also know him, probably knew his family pretty well, Martha and everyone. Yes, I know the I know the children. I know Martha. Yes, I know everyone. They were always, uh, you know, the Girards were always very kind. Um, you know, I lived not too far from where he lived, and I would go as I, I was just telling you. To their to use their pool, and uh, when I left Stanford, um, I always came back to visit with them, um, to visit them, um, and uh, I I have had uh, dinner in the, in their homes. Yeah, I know that I know all the children, uh, and I know Martha of course very well, uh, with whom I often spoke uh, uh, to go to uh, Rene uh, when I called by phone. Yeah. So wonderful. Uh, do, you, do you remember any advice he ever gave you, Pierre? Personal advice or professional advice? Um, I've received, um, there is one book one, that I was writing where I would bring him, you know, uh, the, 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 the chapters, sometimes part of the chapters, and he would read and you know, I know, uh, give me uh, uh, advice and, and um, because he knew um, it, was, it, was, it, it was my book on seduction on the 18th century novel and he knew most of those novels and, uh, and he would, yeah, he would discuss with me, he would give me uh, uh, advice and, uh, and uh, pissed, you know, uh, right. uh, things to pursue. Uh, okay. Yeah. But he didn't give you any advice when you became the department chair at Yale? No, 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 okay. no, no, not, not really. No, no, not really. Wonderful. Okay. Not really. No, our relationship was um, uh, much more sort of intellectual. Um, he, he's, he's not someone who really um, showed uh, to the, showed the bureaucratic aspect of the university. Right. Um, any any real interest i think sure. at, at least not with me no 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 he, he wasn't interested in that uh, he was always interested yeah. in more the personal and the intellectual absolutely yeah. that's right so very good excellent what would be your favorite book of his my favorite book of his it remains for all the reasons that i i gave you earlier uh, I think Des Choses Cachées, Des Choses Cachées, depuis la Fondation du Monde, which is um, an, an, an immense work, in 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 my view. Uh, you know the type of of books when you read and you say, of course, <laughs> uh, of course. <laughs> you know, um, 
leaves you um, the, uh -huh. you know, without without words, right? Uh, and in, inspired, forever inspired, right? So um, he, that's my favorite book uh, of his. Um, although I am always, and, and I have a particular attachment for having purchased that book before going to uh, John Sopkins, uh, Violence and the Sacred. Right. Um, I, I reread that book not too long ago because of an article that I was writing and I reread the chapters on, 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 the, on tragedy. And um, they are, it's also an, uh, an amazing book. But um, it, it did not have the um, the, the, the force that Des Choses Cachées Caché. had for me. Did you, what, what do you think of his last book that came out that was so controversial? The, uh, which one that is? Remind me. Um, Bat battling to the End on Auschwitz. Uh, oh, 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 yes, yes. Well, that is also a, um, a, a giant of a book, uh, I, I, I think. Yeah. Um, um, more difficult yeah. than, than the others. And, um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's not a, a book that I have reread like the other ones. Uh, as much, uh, not too long ago, I was teaching a course on Proust yes. and I picked, I reread uh, the extraordinary chapter on Proust in Mensonge uh, oh, Romantique et Vérité Romanesque. Extraordinary. Right. Uh, and, and I was comparing with other, other texts, that other, te other chapters that I had my student read, from Deleuze and so on. I thought Girard's, Girard's uh, chapter on Proust was, was uh, amazing. <laughs> uh, 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 from the way he, he goes from, from uh, you know, the, the, the beginning of Proust, the sort of tender, um, uh, chap ch tender um, beginning on, on childhood to some of the aspects of, of Proust that are uh, more um, problematical, you know, about uh, Charlus, for example, uh, the, the somber uh, side of, of Proust. So he goes to the um, sort of, um, uh, the, 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 the passages of light and, and tenderness of, the, of, the, of childhood to the, the, the dark um, uh, part of Proust. In, there again, you, there was this extraordinary arc of reading right. um, that only him can come up with sort of... Um, um, drawing a sense of, uh, of uh, the way mimetic uh, desire um, works, right. frankly. Yeah. Well, the more you talk, the more it affirms that you are a Girardian, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you, can't, you can't escape it anymore. And I think that's probably the most profound impact uh, one had, had on all of his students because of his love and his uh, pedagogy that we were talking about, you know, you become a Girardian at the, at the end of all these interactions you have with him. So it's yes. obvious. Uh, yeah, and I suppose I'm not the only one who became, became one without knowing, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 knowing it. And uh, because his, um, his pedagogy, as I started uh, saying when we, when we, when we um, started this conversation, it, it wasn't, it, it's not a matter, uh, contrary to what people might think, because you know G Girard is of course you know a, a someone who is often perceived as you know as a one track, one track person, one track theory person. But his pedagogy is is not a matraquage uh, 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 at all. It's 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 very soft, lenient. Um, yet it can have this effect on you um, 
you know, further along that you, you don't even notice yourself. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And because it is wrapped into, um, into, a, into a gentleness and a friendliness uh, that um, makes uh, a dialogue with him, a conversation with him, even more um, accessible, frankly. So in terms of uh, one of your best memories of him, you would say it would be the time at the swimming pool, probably, right? Yes, that was sweet. Yes, in, indeed, indeed. Okay. Indeed, yeah, he would, he would, he would go from. I'm, I'm not actually a very good swimmer myself, but uh, he, he, he would teach me. You know, if he, I, I told him once that I was afraid of uh, losing ground, and he, 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 I remember him telling me what to do if that is the case. He said, "You just, you just push yourself up when, you, when you touch the, the, the bottom. You just push yourself, and then you, you'll rise." <laughs> I remember the trick that he. He taught me. That was a good thing about Rene. He would teach you literature and the world and life, everything. Exactly. That was... And, and, and all of that sans le savoir. Sans savoir, without knowing it, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, is a, there is an 18th century play called Le Philosophe sans le savoir. I would say, um, um, you know, um, it, it's... How to, how, how to call him? Le pédagogue sans savoir? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. L'étudiant sans savoir. Et étu et certainement l'étudiant sans savoir. L'étudiant sans savoir. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Okay, Professor Pierre Sandamon, thank you so much for your time and agreeing to work on this project. And I hope I can uh, meet you in person sometime very soon. Let's, thank you let's hope so. When, when this... Um, this terrible uh, pandemic uh, is, uh, is, is over. Okay. Yes, and it was lovely to, uh, to meet you and uh, to speak uh, about, uh, about René Girard. Um, it brought me um, a lot of fondness and, um, and emotions, frankly, uh, to um, speak to him again, well, it's, it's of memory, him again. His memory lives on. You know, and he's still alive. So we yes, yes, continue to celebrate him in our lives and in our work. So yes, I, I I wrote two um, two little articles um, not too long ago, and uh, um, and th there were things that I I wrote uh, after his death, and uh, I made a point uh, of um, acknowledging uh, his. Um, his death, in a way, uh, in, in those two pieces, because uh, one of them uh, he, he did not know about, but uh, I wrote a, a small article on Marie Antoinette and actually uh, a, a text by Madame de Stal, Madame de Stal that, that he speaks of in, um, in the book on, um, on, uh, on, the, on the war. Um, but um, I had discussed with him that essay about Madame de Stal, and, and it, it, it's an essay that I always, I, I taught in some of my classes, and I had, I had concocted a kind of Girardian reading of it, and I remember discussing uh, this text with him on the, on the, uh, on the phone. And finally, um, for um, when they asked me to, to write an essay on, uh, on, 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 on virtue, actually, uh, I chose this text by Madame de, by Madame de Stal, and I I had my, my notes that I developed into in, into a paper, and um, in in his honor and in his memory, I I, I made sure that I developed uh, to the fullest the um, mimetic argument that I had uh, found uh, in this text. Where is it published? That article. Uh, it, 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 it came out in, a, in an anthology of texts on, published by a, an 18th century <laughs> press. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Yes, yes. Do you have any other Girardians at Yale in your department or comparative literature? Yes, I have a, a colleague who is a, a medievalist 
who is uh, also a, a very, uh, very strong Girardian. Yes. What's the name? Howard Block is his name. In the French department? In the French department, yes. I see. And did he study with Girard? No, he did not study with Girard, but um, I think he knows the work just by having read it when it, you know, when it, when it came out. So he's a strong Girardian also. He's a strong Girardian also, yes. So you're not alone. <laughs> no, I'm not alone. No, 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 I'm not alone. <laughs> you have colleagues you can <laughs> discuss. Yes, and, and, and we, we actually taught that post class together. And he also agreed with me that the, the piece on Girard was uh, simply um, uh, s sort of uh, withstood the um, the um, test of time. The test of time. Yeah, well, he, was, he was a Girard. He was a big uh, scholar on Proust and uh, Dostoevsky and Cervantes. Yes. yes. All those uh, novelists that he mentioned in Monsieur Romantique, essentially. So. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, again, thank you very much, and thank you. Hopefully, thank you again. Talk to you soon. And yes. Thank you. It.